Ah, we survived the ambush on the temple, and it's safe for now. So, as far as the next tutorial, what about moving AI as if they were objects across the map? You want a hunter to just levitate to the top of a building, or be moved to a certain point in the air, or wherever. Methods that are effective on players just don't seem to work, and teleporting them is no fun, especially if you want to see the movement for a more fluid effect. Foxy Sideburns asks if this is possible, as they go on to explain in the comments that they want to make a ladder for the AI, AI to go up, and they got it working for players, but can't seem to get the same function to work for the AI. So in today's tutorial, we'll be tackling that exact topic, how to get the AI to move with the object's transforms nodes, and let's open up this can of scripting worms and get to it. Okay, for map setup, you just need two things. Uh, but to start, I'm going to go ahead and place our script brain and open it so that way this is for sure the script brain we're using for a reason because we have an object that's going to be pretty far out that we just don't want to have to go all the way out to grab again when we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and create a script brain, but we're going to use it later. Uh, you need a pointer. We're going to place this right here for just a moment. And we need an AI move zone or some kind of zone uh, that you can get the AI to go to or that an AI will enter to... Uh, get this to work which is an area monitor of course but the easiest way we're going to get it to happen is assign him a muzone which it's my elite ultra uh he's gonna be on my team so he doesn't kill me you know all the good stuff and uh we're not gonna work with any squads or anything right now and just assign this move zone which we're going to name uh launch zone and we're gonna name it that okay and make sure it's assigned there we go. Now when he spawns, he's gonna go straight here and then something will happen. And what's going to happen is we're gonna get him to move to this pointer. And this pointer's gonna go way, 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 way out here. Okay, I'd say we're blasted off again pretty far. So let's go ahead and name the pointer to uh, move to. Just that way we know that's where it's going to move to. But since we don't wanna come all the way back out here, to get this object to put it back into the node graph we're going to go and add it now so into the node graph and go ahead and use y to bring it in now we don't have to worry about coming anywhere near that pointer again for the rest of the tutorial now we need to bring this into it and that's it for map setup that's all you have to do of course if you have a ladder you want to make you're going to want to do some different things but uh, this is just generally to show you how to make it happen and you can use this tutorial and apply it to those different situations like a ladder or such so to begin we don't have a lot to do actually it's not it's not so bad uh, we need to go up here to events basic which I call anything that just says events or players or AI and nothing else I call it basic anyway on an object entered node you're gonna want to start with that that's the event you want to happen to get this whole thing going we're going to need an area monitor to monitor the area that our elite will be entering or player or so on because that's what great, what's great about this is it works for any object but you can actually determine what objects you want to work and I will get to that but you're gonna grab an area monitor from variables basic the very first one and we're gonna plug it into the area monitor input and the area monitor that we want to monitor for when something enters it is our AI move zone that we named launch zone okay so now, all we need to do is grab a, up here in objects transform, the very bottom, translate object to point. That's what we need. This usually works for most everything. Uh, it works for players and other objects, but for some reason, it won't work on AI. And it's strange. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't work. So we're gonna not worry about that one. What's neat though is this one does work on players and objects the same way the other one does as well as AI so you don't have to worry about making a separate one if you want players to be able to use this as well. So there we go we're going to plug that in there and the object that's going to be moved is the object that enters the move zone which is going to be our elite. The position. We can't just plug it in here unfortunately so we need to grab a way to get their position and that's in the same tab and it's called get object position. You plug position into the position input here and then the object that we're going to get the position of is our pointer and that's where the uh, elite will be moved to lastly 
we need to change the duration to something we want, you know, that makes sense to where they're going to be going. If you want them going up a ladder, and let's say the ladder is like 12 foot tall, you can have it set to three or four seconds, and then it'll be kind of like a slower movement up the ladder, like they're actually climbing the ladder. The movement curve uh, is, I haven't played around with it a lot, you can kind of experiment, but I just use linear. Uh, because it's the one I've tried the most and it uh, and it works uh, for what we're going to do It's just gonna go in a straight line with no speed up or slow down on the startup or ending and that's it That's all we have to do uh, We will come back to this in just a moment after the main part of the tutorial because there's one a little addition I'm going to show for those who are particular about who they what they want to use this uh, Translate right here. So let's give it a test and see what happens. My Elite Ultra, as usual, he's going to spawn in, and as soon as he hits that zone, BAM! He's gone. He's blasting off again. And that's it. Now, if I walk into it, I will also get launched. But see, my grenade got launched too. That's a problem for some people. And that's where the second part of this tutorial comes in. Let's say you don't want a grenade to get launched. You don't want a vehicle to get launched. Let's say you have a ladder, and you drive by it, and your Warthog gets yanked up the ladder. You don't want that to happen. Well, to stop that is actually not as hard as you might think. We simply add an exception in here. We disconnect here, and we're going to put a branch. And our branch is what tells it to work or not. And let's go down here, or up here to logic, and grab our branch and go ahead and place it. We can connect these two already, and we'll set up the condition after. So we'd go ahead and connect it there, and then connect the if true, because that's what we're gonna be working with, not the if false. If something is, then it will move. And if it is not, it will not move. And how do we find out what that is? Well, we go down here to players, and let's say you only want players and AI to be able to use this zone or this uh, object's transform. Like, let's say you have a ladder. You don't want vehicles and grenades and flags and oddballs and whatever. You don't want them going up the ladder. They're not going to be able to climb a ladder. Okay, well, this is how we do that. We go up here, and after you get that, we're going to grab the an AI advanced, actually, is get is AI. Go ahead and move these down a little bit because we're going to put one final node right here in the middle. But we can go ahead and connect the object, which is the one that entered the object or the area. And we're going to plug in the object again here the same way. Now it's going to check the object. Is it a player or is it an AI? And the only node that we have that has or in its name is down here in logic. It's the very first node. It's called Boolean logic. And we go ahead and plug both of these in right here. And we're going to be using the or because the or means is it a player or an AI? If it is either one of these, it will work. If it is not a player or an AI, then it will not work. You don't want to use and because then it's going to be like, is it a player and an AI? And that's not exactly possible. So it won't work. So you're going to want to use or. And with that, now only AI and only players will be able to use this zone and nothing else. So I'm going to go ahead and let him go first. See you later. I'm gonna throw my grenade, and now you notice my grenade was not affected, but me, I was affected, and so was he. And there you go. That's how you get AI to move across the map with the objects transform nodes the same way you would, you know, other objects and players. This may lead to several maps having floating AI all over the place, and you know, Maybe that wouldn't be so bad. You can apply this in several of the ways in the example shown, and I honestly couldn't tell you the amount of uses this type of thing has. You want a ladder? It works. You want an AI to appear, appear to be abducted? It works. Same as if you want them to appear to be traveling up or down the gravity to lift the Covenant ship like in that Halo Reach mission with June. This was a simple script, but it was just specific and off the wall enough to warrant a video explaining how to make it happen. Good luck with all of your scripting needs with translating objects. Forward to victory!